Podcasters Roundtable Round 107. I don't think I have a title for this. Dave, did I name this show? I was trying to find it in my email. Yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave our to... co-host, not doing his job, but it's okay. No, he no, doesn't no. get paid a lot. <laughs> but uh, hey, today we're talking about finding an audience when your podcast is new. You just started, you've got a great show, and, and we're going to work on that premise. We're going to work off that premise. We're going to say that you've got the show dialed in, content's awesome, presentation's good. You know, because as SP uh, wrote to me in the pre-show, we were talking a little bit about this and he said, you know, first thing he would do is make sure before you start pushing it out there and letting people know, I've got a new show you want to hear, it should be good. So when they come, they stay and they don't get bad content or really bad presentation or something. So take a few episodes to dial that in. If that's something you need to do, we're going to assume your show is amazing. And that when people come there, they're going to subscribe. You're brand new. You don't have an audience. Maybe you do. We'll talk about that. But this one is something that people always want to know about. Like, how do I get more people to my podcast. So that's what we're going to talk about. We got three new round tablers. That's really cool. But Dave, welcome to the show. Co-host Dave Jackson. Yeah, Dave Jackson from the school of podcasting.com. Uh, I can't wait to hear what the other people have to say. I'm, I'm going to listen a little bit and then chime in. I think he's going to ask amazing, deep, thoughtful questions that's to it. get out the best tips possible, but uh, starting all the way on the end and welcome to the round table. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> what is your podcast? My podcast is the VO Boss podcast, and it is uh, specific to my industry of voiceover. And the boss stands for business <clears throat> owners, strategies, and success. So it's concentrated on business and marketing for a creative uh, type of industry for voiceover artists. So very, very niche market. The we niche, that's the way to go. Yeah. And we yeah. know you're, you're not, uh, now that we know that, topic of your show it mm -hmm. makes sense when you said you weren't in your studio so i imagine do, are you, do you have a vocal booth i do i do it's actually right beside me Very i do cool. and cool. and uh i use um ipdtl which is isdn technology to yes. record it so do you find that to be reliable i love it uh because i can have all of my guests sounding like they're all in my yes. studio okay and yeah have to look i at use that again, it for I... my yeah i use it for my uh voiceover actually career as well to connect up with studios very cool. Yeah, I tried that when it first came out. I mm -hmm. had some issues, but I definitely have to. Someone recommended it recently. Okay, so I'm going to look into that again. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks. Next to Anne, virtually, of course, Clay, welcome to your first roundtable. Hey, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm Clay Gross, Chief Executive Fish Nerd of the Fish Nerd Podcast, a show that's always interesting, usually funny, and mostly true. And we talk about fish, fishing, and eating fish. You, so that's so what we do. And I've been podcasting for a while. The small white lies are about the size of the fish, right? Like I caught this fish and it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if, every, if everyone knows you're lying, it's not a lie. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to write that down. Hey, and uh, another new round tabler. I love this. We got, we're got we spreading it out. Jonathan, welcome to the round table. Hey, thanks. Yeah, my name is Jonathan Messenger. I make a serialized sci-fi podcast for kids called The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. And no way! I know. Oh, I didn't recognize you. I, I love That's that show. I know. That's amazing. <laughs> this happens. I love this. Oh, thanks, thanks. Ah, oh, so happy. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. And, and actually, this is a great topic for me because I just launched a brand new show a few weeks ago called uh, Pants on Fire. That's a game show for kids, nice. and uh, and we're trying to build that audience right now. So, uh, cool. yeah. Hey, Jonathan, do me a favor, just. Tap on your microphone. I just want to make sure you're using. Uh, yeah, you think you're using your internal microphone? You might want to switch your microphone if you have that other one, or maybe it's just a prop. I don't know. It looks pretty. Looks. Nice. <laughs> like, give, it, give it a this shot. I think, there's a, I think there's a high all buried under there. Yeah. Okay. Let me dig it up for you. Hold yeah, on. for sure. But let's let's. Uh, while he's doing that, we will we will dig in. I guess the best place to start. I mean, well, gosh, Jonathan has a brand new show, but he has an existing show, so I guess that's related. I am curious. Uh, if when you started, you were starting from zero, meaning you had no prior sort of online audience, no pre-established audience to promote the podcast to, is that anyone here on the round table? No one, everyone had an audience. I, my show, with my show, it was the first, it was brand new. It was brand new. The first, the first show, the kids. The Finn zero. Caspian. 
content game. Yeah, that was uh, starting from scratch. Okay, so you didn't like do a blog before? Or you weren't known online? I had so. like a small career as a failing fiction writer. Nice. Uh, so maybe like five people knew who I was at that point. But uh, but yeah, it was pretty much starting from scratch. Cool. So what made you then? Why did you decide a podcast was the way to go? Well, because I really wanted it to be interactive. And I felt like if I did it as a podcast, then I could get kids week after week, kind of hopefully writing in and participating in the show somehow in a way that publishing doesn't allow you to do. Um, and so that was really why I went that route. Did it work? It did. It's been super fun making a show. Uh, kids send me emails all the time about things they like and don't like about the show, which is cool. <laughs> so very interesting audience with, with kids. And I don't know. Do these kids, the majority have, are they subscribers or their parents subscribe for them? Or how does that work? Most of them, not, I would say probably 95% are parents subscribing. So a lot of the emails I get from kids are from their parents' emails, dictated emails. Uh, but occasionally I do get emails from like maybe 10 or 11 year olds who have their own devices. So you're, so you're, you're really trying to get your new audience, the people you need to get in touch are the parents to then give it to the kids, right? Right. Is that who you're marketing to is parents? Yeah, absolutely. Reaching out to, to parents. So what did you do to find the audience in the beginning when you had no, when you were brand new, no one knew you existed? Yeah. So I actually went a very traditional PR route where I wrote up a press release. I wrote up a press release. So basically I identified like three different types of outlets that might be interested in my show. So one would be parenting blogs and parenting magazines. One, I'm in Chicago, so uh, Chicago media to let them know. And then um, the third one was like sort of blogs that cover sci-fi and that sort of thing. Did and the, I, sorry, I interrupt. No, 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 by the way, the round table is all about interruption. So any of you have a thought <laughs> at any time you want to ask something, just jump in and ask. But did the local media thing, did that work? It did. That was actually the most successful of all three. How what year was this? 2016. Okay, so podcasting a little bit more known. I mean, why did why did they pick you up? A, 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 in theory, a nobody, right? And local media picks up a, a podcast, which they're like, okay, what's his podcast? But how did how did that happen? What was the what? Well, what so I think I think I you know, was, oh, hopefully I wrote a good press release that kind of pitched me as a Chicago guy making the show. Um, I sent it to specifically to writers who I had seen and editors who work on the kind of like family coverage, you know, so parenting stuff, things to do with your kids, people who wrote that kind of a thing. Uh, I sent it to them and one of those writers had an eight year old kid and listened to it with her kid and her kid really liked it. And so I just was, I think I was very lucky, but that was in the Chicago Tribune. And that is what that sort of really helped the show gain a lot of momentum. Were you looking at your numbers at that point? I was. And obsessively. Did, you see, did you see a spot? Yeah, because new podcast is what we do. We have to look at our numbers. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you notice a difference in the numbers once it sort of came out in the media? Yeah, I think the numbers did go up, but so you know, I think that I'm sort of a different case than a lot of folks, but so the numbers definitely went up. But what was good about it was that there are always parenting blogs who are always putting together top 10 podcasts to listen with your kids um, lists. And so getting that bit of press allowed me when people were Googling podcasts for kids started to show up a little bit more. I started to show up more on those lists. And that was very, very helpful for me. Very cool. So for the other two, you had an audience, a pre-existing audience somewhere. And what was your audience? When you launched your podcast, what year was it? Okay, so actually we're a little less than a year. Um, okay. We'll be a year in June. So, so I had a- You fit I the definition, a, you're a new podcast. Looking for I am audience. a new podcast. Yeah. and uh, But I've had an audience uh, in my in my industry f since about 2009, I started to, people kind of know who I am online. So I've, I've built up an audience uh, through another kind of uh, area of my company and they know me from there. So I started to, uh, advertise the podcast to that audience to gain listenership. And hey. it's, mm -hmm. uh, I forgot my question, but <laughs> you, why did you go, you had an audience, why a podcast mm -hmm. at that point? 
Uh, well, okay. So for my particular audience, for creatives, about the last thing they ever think about is the topic that I'm speaking of, which is business and marketing. And so it's it's so important anyways for their for their success in their career that it was something that I wanted to uh, draw attention to, give content to the audience so then I could draw in I could draw in a listenership um, and then also, you know, uh, make some revenue off of it. So it was kind of a, a long-term plan to distribute content in a in a medium that I do every day. I mean, I'm on a microphone every day working voiceover. So podcasting is simply, a, it's like a real natural thing to get into. And believe it or not, there weren't a ton of voiceover podcasts. You know, if I could count on one hand how many there are out there that are really good, th there weren't. So I wanted to put one together on a topic that was very much necessary that people don't necessarily consider to spend... Uh, money on so that I could draw them in to then offer them products. What, um, what are you doing to find the audience? Well, you know, <laughs> social media, of course. And, um, you know, we, we produce obviously a weekly podcast. So I have, um, whenever there's a podcast that's launched, I'm having like every other day, there's a social media, um, graphic advertisement that goes out to say, Hey, you know, new episode, we're doing it. I'm doing it in as many groups that will allow me to do that. I mean, and one thing that's good about the podcast is it's free to listen to. So people don't think I'm advertising. Uh, so I can put it in multiple groups to gain listenership you, that way. Totally. What do you guys think of social media? I mean, it, it, for promo for a podcast, it's a fast moving river and mm -hmm. people are generally, when they see it, they're not, I, I would say most people aren't prepared to listen to a podcast, right? Especially if something is not five minutes. It, it's an investment. So it, it kind of goes by. I doubt a lot of, I, I don't think social drives a lot of actual listening, but it does drive awareness. Maybe they, mm -hmm. they, they say, Ooh, I do want to go look for that podcast. I don't know. What do you guys think? Clay, do you use social media for your podcasts? And what do you think I do, it I, does for you? I do. I do. And so before I launched my podcast, I had already built a name in the fishing industry as a writer. Uh, and I failed at getting a book deal, so which is why I launched the podcast because it's easier than writing. Am I trying to grow an audience? So I already had about ten thousand people on Facebook following uh, the Fish Nerds before nice. the podcast even was born. Uh, and social media does barely a thing uh, yeah. for getting new listeners, as far as I can tell. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't seem to matter how much money I throw it at it. It's I can't figure out a why do you, strategy. To why do you think that is? Get numbers. Uh, well, first of all, fishing people. Um, they have a don't lot of time understand. To they do, but they don't understand new <laughs> technology. They're, they're like, ah, you got noise in your ear holes. I'm not sure. Uh, what kind of lure do you use to catch that podcast? Um, so it doesn't always work out the way one would hope. So fishing <laughs> audiences are hard, and I and so um, so I I post a lot on social media. I love Facebook, uh, Twitter. I struggle with, and Instagram. I struggle with. Uh, but basically, they like short hits. And I think very slowly things grew. Uh, and then once my Facebook page crossed the 10,000 mark, I became invisible again. Um, mm. So you would put a post up and nobody would see it. And so I had to start a Facebook group. And that way my my listeners actually had a place to go and interact. And that group has been great. But the Facebook page, yeah. I've got is, almost 15,000 people. I can people agree with that. Have no the idea group, there. Is the group, do you think the group's helping drive listens or the group's just great for interaction, but not the podcast? Uh, both things. Both I things. Agree. The group has contrived, of, uh, contrived con has some listeners in it. And what I do is I pull content from there. They share a fishing news story. I'll use them. I'll say their name and I'll post that story in that conversation thread. So those who are just talking go, oh, he said my name and they'll listen. And people love hearing their names. Uh, that's a you know, so one sure. listener at a time is how we grow the show. That's right, really that's right. slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what's your magic tip when you're starting? What's the what's the one thing you can be doing when you start out? Yeah, with Dave. Your amazing show. What's that one thing? What's the first thing to do? How's that? I mean, for for getting people to find the heck, find your podcast to find you. Yeah, to find you. I mean, uh, be in iTunes uh, it, or Apple Podcast. Sorry. Yeah, I would say if you get any kind of content from anybody whether it's twitter facebook so if somebody reaches out to you the first question you should be what well, should be where did you find me hmm. and then go to where that person is and if you see another person go where did you find me and he goes oh i heard about you from so and so i forget who it was i was listening to a podcast and he would ask people where did you find me and a lot of times it was like well so and so told me about it and he would go find so and so and say thank you so much for telling so and so about my show 
who told you about it? And he literally just had this daisy chain of finding one person because most of the time it was word of mouth. But what and do you do with that information? Okay, so what? You chase down five people, but what do you what do you do? Well, how do you turn that into success to keep keep it up, right? I think you know, what that does, I, 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 I on my email list, when you sign up to my email, email list, there's a voluntary question. The only thing I ask you besides your name is where did you hear about the show? And yeah. so it, if anything, and almost everyone fills it out and it's fascinating because I think for, Google, YouTube, I mean, it, it's fascinating where it comes from. That said, it's, I haven't applied it to anything. It's just sort of information I'm gathering. I guess for me, it would be if I see, you know, if I get 10 people that reply back and eight of them said Twitter and two of them said Facebook and I'm doing LinkedIn and Instagram and MySpace, <laughs> uh, all these other, you know, it's back. It's back. yeah, I, I got to figure out where my people are and then go, you know, it's like just it because help. there's only 24 hours in a day, it does help. If, if the majority are on Twitter, I'm going to go there. Like and then that. it's just a matter of Ray, you're really good at getting conversations going on, on Twitter. And that's where I think where you, when you go from outside the, the podcast topic to, Hey, it's still kind of podcasting in your case, but it's, it's an actual conversation, which I could never do at 144 characters. I just cannot get to the point. I love it. I love it because it makes people get to the point, but conversations is probably my, is one of my big tips because, or, or answering people like YouTube drives more people to my podcast than, than I even expected. It's not really there. It's not, that's not the function of it, but people fill it all the time. They say YouTube and, um, for me, I notice at least when it's YouTube, you can't really see this on podcast because you don't get an, a, an alert when someone subscribes. Unfortunately, YouTube, I wish podcasting was a little more like YouTube, but when someone subscribes to you on YouTube, you can get that alert. And so when I answer, it's a, it's amazing because I'll go into the comments, I'll start answering comments and like, I'll start to see, I'll answer someone's comment that see that name and then they'll subscribe. Like just having, just answering one comment, you know, that interaction. So at least that way I know that interaction does have some effect. Um, but those conversations have a huge effect and you never have to say subscribe to my show. Once you start having a conversation with someone, they'll look more into, they'll look into you, right? And you should have your podcast on your Twitter profile, right? Whatever that important link is, you should have it on your profiles uh, everywhere on social. So that anytime someone goes to look up who the heck you are, they'll see, oh, you have a show and they might dig deeper. So that's a great way to build again, one at a time. I can I tell you what. Go ahead, Jonathan. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Well, I can tell you one thing that did work for a brand new podcaster. I got this today and it worked because normally if you email me and it's a blanket email that you've sent to 400 other people, not only am I going to delete it, I'm probably going to mark you as spam. And so oh, I got this me. one today from Dan Isaac. It says, well, this is a bit odd. My name is Dan Isaac and I am hosting the upcoming Fighting Fat podcast. We launch on April 4th. Taking advice from the School of Podcasting. So now I know where he came from. I decided to reach out to you, another podcaster, about losing weight and being healthy. Let me introduce myself. And he goes down. He says, after learning, I was pre-diabetic. and a, But basically, he says, I am now down over 130 pounds. Okay, now this guy's got a cool story. He, and I look at that and go, ooh, that guy could bring value to my podcast. That's really all I'm looking for is like, how are you going to bring value? And he's, then he throws in, I was also the uh, morning show host in my 20s for five years. So he's a good talker. Um and I just want to reach out and say, he didn't, didn't, he just, just wanted to say, hi, uh, we're getting ready to launch. Here's my website. And then at the very end, he goes, by the way, having a third nipple would be awesome because somewhere in one of my podcasts, I said, eating something and blah, 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 and you'll grow a third nipple. So he proved he listened. And so I said, dude, you lost 130 pounds. I would love to have you on my show. So he reached out to somebody else in his, his genre, but he also said, here's what I can bring to the table. And so many people um, I had somebody this week that reached out to the school of podcasting and the guest was a, a real estate person. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with podcasting. So uh, in this case, Dan proved that he did the research. He knows he's a good fit. He explained why he was a good fit and it was a no brainer for him. I'm like, Hey, this is a great fit. So Here's he gets in lady. front of your audience and then grows his audience. That's the key there, right? Yeah. You know, you, you make a great, uh, great point. One of the one of the big growth areas that we've always had, and I did a presentation at Podcast Mid Atlantic on this, is going on other podcasts is a great way to reach other listeners because people who don't listen to podcasts, it's hard to bring it's them hard. in. So go on. There's, and I always recommend get out of your niche a little bit um, because people have multiple tastes. 
uh, you know, for example, I'm about to invite um, the Casual Birder podcast to come on the Fishner's podcast uh, just to uh, reach her audience because fishing and birds have everything in common with each other. And I'll reach her audience, she'll reach mine, and that crossover equals one or two more listeners every time you do it. And it really adds up over time. I've been on dozens of other podcasts, and whenever I see a new podcast come out that I can connect with, I invite them on my show uh, and try to get them some of our audience. Because our audience is thirsty for other good podcasts, and I'm hoping that other podcast audiences are thirsty for some fish. We'll, fish go, awesome. we'll go back to that because Clay actually brings up a good yeah. point that new podcast listeners are much harder to reach. People aren't listening to podcasts, but we really that we need that we need those people as an industry right if we just keep going out to the existing people we don't grow the number of podcasts grows the listeners don't grow in order to succeed we're now like what it's uh, edison report just came out and we're at a quarter what is it 73 million americans say they listen to a podcast once a month at least so but we need to grow i mean it's only a quarter of americans i think there's still like 30 percent of people who've never heard of a podcast so we need to address that topic but jonathan if you can remember, <laughs> let's, let's go throw this it back is, to you. This is going to be a huge letdown now. No, it's because okay. it's been a while. But I was just going to say that I find we we're, were talking about social media, and I have found that um, using audiograms for my podcast, the little videos with the waveforms on mm -hmm. them, has been hugely helpful for my show. Just making uh, the posts a lot more shareable. Um, I have kids. Uh, tell jokes on my show. They send them in, record them on their parents' phones, send them in. And I make little audiograms out of those jokes and I put them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, and they get shared a lot. And that's been, I've definitely seen people come to the show through that. Right. And there's Jeez. no way to tell like if that translates <clears throat> into subscribers necessarily, right? But I mean, you are seeing, you're seeing engagement. So that's, yeah, right. that's most right. we can ask for uh, right. outside of them telling you, I subscribed because of that audiogram, right? Right, right, right. Because yeah. it's a lot, it's anything extra that we have to do beyond our podcast is more work, right? And it takes away from the production of the podcast. So it can be difficult and you don't want to waste time if that's not actually doing what you want to do, whether it's reaching people, um, engaging people, ultimately getting back to your podcast to subscribe. So it is interesting. Like, I don't, I'm curious how much we evaluate those things we do, but, um, but and it looks like actually, you. If Oh, I was just I was just going to mention that I uh, in trying to, to branch out and get more new listeners, um, I actually applied to there's a, a conference here in L.A. Uh, Social Media Week and actually um, applied to be a speaker to talk about how podcasting was being able to reach out to different listeners. And so that was I hadn't heard back yet, but that was one of the ways to get the face to face interaction with people. The other thing that we do on a monthly basis is that we do a Facebook live and we call it Boss Talks so that anybody can come and and ask questions or talk and we like to uh you know try to focus on the people that are in the 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 trenches of the industry because they as you mentioned before they love to like they want to be on the show it's not like i like we have so many people that already interview celebrities so much in our industry it's more like let's get the people who are really working it and in the trenches and are being bosses every day and so that was one of the ways that we tried to really attract new listeners is by having um, you know, face-to-face -face interaction as well as people who were not celebrities on our show. Do you do you have a conference for your niche? That's where you need to go. Oh yeah, we have, yeah. And as a matter of fact, I just came back from a conference uh, two weeks ago. It was one of the largest conferences in our industry. And it was amazing to me how many people, you know, were like fans and they're like, oh my God, we get to meet the bosses. Cause I co-host with another, another colleague of mine. And it was really, because I didn't really have an idea. I mean, I have stats about how many people listen, but I, I wasn't always hearing like the feedback or how much we really affected them and how they listen to us on a every on a you know daily basis or whatever it was and so that interaction in a conference that big led to a whole lot more subscribers because we met people face to face you need right. to tell those people tell a friend yeah exactly <laughs> tell a friend exactly. word of mouth is still i think the single yeah. best way that podcasts spread and do you know booth junkie you know of booth junkie i've you... yes i've heard of booth junkie yeah you should you should get <laughs> yep. him on your show i love yep. it's a great youtube yep. channel and mm -hmm. you should get he, he I, I bet he has a huge community that would be very yeah. interested in your podcast. And there's also Honest Trailers, too. I know the guy who does Honest Trailers. Oh, yeah, Honest Trailers yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So, they're, yeah. they're huge. Mm -hmm. Their screen junkies yeah. is huge. Yep. I'm mm -hmm. picturing yep. how cool that conference would be. Could you see that? Hey, tell hey, me, how are you? 
Where, hey, nice where to meet you. Where do you live? Hey, hey, Sunday, Sunday, where do you live? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're so, we're just like, this is the worst stereotypes. Just it like, is. Terrible. So, so speaking of going to conferences, from the very first uh, month we launched our show, we connected with big fishing uh, expos in, in, our, in our region. And we stand at a table with these big silly signs behind us and we talk to people and record live shows but also we get we made up uh swag like decals and things like that and in order to get the free swag people had to literally take their phones out in front of us subscribe to the podcast or show us they subscribed then they get the swag and then they entered into the contest dave, dave and, uh, has if you're not watching on video because you, you should be nerds youtube.com slash podcasters roundtable yeah i think that's it you have I'm to keeping it in the package so I can sell it on the, eBay uh, later. He's going to sell oh, it on eBay. <laughs> you know, Dave, I've not sold one. I've not sold one of those on my website. No so. swag. When they open the uh, Podcasters Hall of Fame, it'll go up on the wall. That's there it. Oh, we had lots of swag. Lots of swag. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. Good. You know, um, one thing I was going to say about reaching people who don't listen to podcasts, which is obviously a very difficult thing to do. Way to bring it back around. He's a pro. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> is... Uh, one of the things is because, like you were saying, Ray, it's difficult sometimes to reach out to the audience, if they're, especially if they're kids who don't have access to it because they get it through their parents, is finding the people who talk to the audience that you want to reach, whether they're podcast listeners or not. So like for us, um, we reach out to a lot of librarians. Uh, we I did a panel at a librarian conference. We're doing another one in June at a librarian conference, uh, teacher conferences, that sort of thing, the people who bring these stories to kids. Um, and so I think that that is, there's, I'm sure that there, there is that for every niche, uh, you know, librarians for kids, but obviously um, for any, whatever niche you're in, there's somebody who's talking to that audience who can let them know about your podcast. Right. What Influencer Dave? marketing. Like that's, that's the key, right? Like who, has, well, that's what it's who, called. Yeah. Who, I mean, I'm bringing up the cheesy market marketing, term, which I just makes me want to bomb it, but, <laughs> but that's what it is. Essentially who has the ear of the people you want to reach, right? Again, yeah. don't reinvent the wheel and try to reach all those people. You know, and that's like getting on a big podcast. I mean, that's a great, it's a great tip for sure. Yeah. One of the one of the things we also similar to what he's talking about is uh, we also reached out to our local public radio affiliates, and anytime they shared a story with fish relationships, like anytime fish is in the news, we would say, you know, you really might want to have an expert on and talk about this. And we got invited on to go to Boston Public Radio and New Hampshire Public Radio uh, within a very short time of launching the podcast. Uh, and then we were selling stories to them to air as part of their news program. When the fish story came up, they would call us and say, go make the story. And then we had to figure out how to edit and make NPR style nice. stories. That's uh, cool. That helped grow the audience a little bit. And then we got to speak at an event in Boston called the uh, Rise of the Podcast. And we were an example of the rising podcasters. And we spoke with PRX, uh, shared the stage with PRX and some other big um, podcasting companies. And we were just two guys talking about fish and it's awesome. I have a, I have a yeah. great, great genius marketing technique. You need to yeah. tag fish with a business card. So when a guy oh. catches a fish or a lady, <laughs> your, your card is just right there. You could do it. Dave would have done it. Dave would have already done this. <laughs> you would have tagged all the fish. I'm doing it. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Dave, I want hockey stick growth. I'm an American in 2018. I, don't, I watch videos for 10 seconds. I watch the next cat video. I'm on to something else. I don't have time to grow my <laughs> listeners. Ship one person at a time. You're boring me. Give me hockey stick growth. One thing I can do, and I got a, a thousand new listeners. Is that is there even anything like that? Does that happen in podcasting? The Oprah effect. We talk no. about this. We talk about this because like, don't put your podcast on Amazon S3 because overnight you're going to wake up with a thousand new subscribers or just maybe they're not subs. Maybe they're just a mass of downloads, right? So how about how about how about making an episode really popular? Um, and it doesn't mean they subscribed, but you, you caught a lot of attention and maybe, maybe a handful, 2% of those people actually subscribe. What do you think for exposure for your show or an episode, um, to a larger group of people? Anyone can answer this. I put the pressure on Dave, but anyone can answer. Um, or is there anything you're trying? You know, one person at a time is great, but if you could capture you know, if you can get a thousand people, do you have any episodes where you saw like, wow, that episode was really popular. I have no clue why. Clay, you're shaking your head. I do. I do. Uh, last year we interviewed uh, a uh, 
New York Times bestselling writer who's a fly writer, and that one blew up. And then, like, why two did weeks it blow ago, up? Just because uh, he spread it? Why did it blow up? His name, his name in the industry is big. Why are people um, searching in iTunes for his name? Like, you, you not, not, like they're why? not searching what? in iTunes. It's it's uh, comes up in the Google searches. You, so they're so you came that. up, you were so relevant already. I mean, because you know what I mean. I'm sure his name. I'm sure there's ten other results before your podcast. Well, the other name. thing is is he has a page on Facebook for his fans, and so oh, I went posted. there and said. Hey, can I post you this? Post okay. Yeah, I posted it, and he Wait. said, "Sure, go ahead." And you got to get him to post it because I, then... well, he didn't because he oh. he actually doesn't use social media. Still worked. Oh, uh, and he wouldn't even get on a computer for a phone call. I had to do, do a phone call, which was awful, mm. but it was big. And then um, turns out, if you use the word "flat earth" in your title of your podcast, <laughs> you download it. So I did. Episode <laughs> episode <laughs> Wait, what, what? Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. What is that about? Because. I have a bunch of tips from SP, and he gave, he sent me a top 10 list. Let me read some of these. SP from betterpodcasting.com. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, leave CDs in uh, of your top 10 episodes on a city bus, create a MySpace page, post your past <laughs> uh, episodes there 10 to 20 times a day. Yep. Uh, follow, let's see, attend hashtag Flat Earther Conference. What am I missing? Did he say that? He said that. No, he's right. I don't the like, joke? I, there's no joke. Like uh, the latter yeah. is, is a thing people believe in. I don't, by the way, I'm a, I'm a circle guy. Um, so, but, so you actually, so science. Yeah, I believe in the science go, stuff, go. but there's, it's a huge growing community community and they're dying for content and they hate us, uh, you know, round earthers. Uh, and so they, they get on, they interact with us, they argue science and they, uh, they have no idea what they're talking. They're fabulous. Um, it's so much fun and ridiculous. And uh, okay, it turns right. out well, now I'm caught up. Yeah, I don't know. Do it. Do it like a Flat Earth's Guide to Podcasting Growth, you and you'll win. So, with that episode, are you saying go interview big names in your space? Is that enough? Like to get it? Well, you have to interview them, and you have to find out where their audience is sitting, and then mm -hmm. put it in front of their audience, and that's kind of the, the se second part of it, because otherwise, nobody knows about it. Right. The, the one thing that's easy that I see a lot of people just blow it. They, and I understand why, because it's probably the last thing you're going to do before you hit publish. And that is the title of your episode. So many people just, I, I saw Wait, one. You mean like, so TPR like, hash number sign 174 colon a show no, about something is not a good no, title. No, I'm, I'm not making this up. The title would be podcasters round table. Yes. And then the second episode would be called Podcasters Roundtable. Two. No. Episode two. No. Oh. No, no. Just, oh. just so, podcast. Okay. <laughs> so the name of the show is Podcasters <laughs> Roundtable. Episode one was called Podcasters Roundtable. Episode two was called Podcasters Roundtable. So what should I be doing? How do I fix this terrible uh, error I'm making? Uh, then you go into whoever you're, however you're making your feed, whether it's Libsyn or Blueberry or whatever, and you, you come up with a title of what did you talk about in that episode that's going to... Your, your, your target audience is right in front of you. What is going to reach out and grab them and get them besides flat earth? Uh, that's going to get them to, to listen to that episode. Because I, I told the person, I said, what if I really like episode number two, how am I going to tell my friend, go to podcasters Roundtable and listen to the episode called podcasters Roundtable? They're going to go, which one? Cause they okay. were all named the title of the show. And I was like, wow. Now we're going to get, we're going to slippery slope into episode numbers, but I, yeah. I won't go but there. Just, it should be something that. Well, that makes people want to click alone. on it. So, yeah. So iTunes too, right? So if you're in an Apple podcast, I'm never going to, I'm never make no, a switch. You both. But <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if people are searching for your topic, fishing, you know, um, fly fishing, if you did a whole episode on fly fishing, that better oh. be in your title. Yeah, I'm not, you're not kidding. And if you do a clickbait title, like, like uh, the five best yes. flies for fly Best's fishing, good. they do really well. Uh, and, Even and, in a podcast? Yeah. Even in a podcast, I know yeah, YouTube are, works great, but I, yeah, it works good. And and I think for you the have web to or for iTunes. I you know I don't know where I, don't know. I just know all my stats. The numbers you go see, up a little bit, it's, but right. it's not like thousands. It's it's dozens, yeah. uh, but dozens is a lot when you're doing one person at a time. You so. will not believe what happened. If, when well, I this exactly. If I can say that you you like kind of supplement that in the back end of your website to really, be, I mean, I've, I've done extensive work trying to build in SEO into my website. So I actually get every episode transcribed. I put that into the page. You know, I offer that as an open up into the page. All the titles are like, you know, header ones, header twos. And so we've done a lot of work 
for that. And it doesn't, there's not an immediate ROI on that. Mm -hmm. It's, it does take some time because there's some longevity, but we're trying to build in those terms that I've been associated with for a long time and just to see if that helps. But, um, you know, I'm trying to build it that way versus, you know, rather in, in, in iTunes, but on the, but on the back end of the website as well. People are going to ask, Ooh, wait, should I be doing transcripts? What do we think of transcripts? This is an interesting topic. I did it for SEO. Right. But we've talked but about it before. It, is it's it an actually open up, good for SEO? I don't know. It's, it's well, okay. Theoretically. <laughs> Google. And th so the, 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 I think Daniel will tell you he's not here. Mm -hmm. We'll see him again. Um, that Google, or maybe even Todd will tell you, Todd Cochran, do you, Get penalized for that because it's not conversation in a transcript is not um it's not it's not written for people to right. consume right mm -hmm. in in a, in a written form so i think there was a time where it seems obvious i mean it's not like a it seems if i have every word of right. the conversation in there i've got all the keywords but i think if you just write well written show notes because mm -hmm. this is an expense right so the it thing is. is and i'm i'm curious if it's better for your show it may be worth it if it's not then maybe you could put that money elsewhere. I don't know, Dave, what were you going to say? Because we don't, we don't write like we talk, don't talk like we write. Right. So I know for me, if I go to a page that's just been transcript, copy, paste, and I go to that website, I go, uh-uh, not, not happening. And so what happens now is you've got the Google juice, but the problem is your bounce rate just went up because I went to one page and said, no, thank you. Um, it's, yeah, it's not my page. It's it's an open up window, which may or may oh, not nice. even get into the SEO. So I do show notes and I do tweetable, you know, quotes. And, and click here for the yeah, transcript. and then it's yes, yeah, click here. It opens a window for the transcript, so it's not even visible unless you click. And I don't even know if Google gets that information for it, but we do work on the show page as well. Yeah. There's been it's, a lot of talk yeah. recently too about the accessibility issue and having transcripts of your podcast available for people who are hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm very, obviously very sympathetic to that as well. So even if it's not um, translated to subscribers or SEO, there is a sort of public good aspect to, to having your transcripts as well. For sure. Yeah, that's a great, that's another great point. Because people, I know that this is one, Dave, you probably see all the time is people, you know, A, you've got every transcript service contacting you. Oh, but but, but we have a new one. Should people do it? I just use them. Uh, what do you just do? Are you are you gonna like give them free spot? They're not sponsoring the show, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> whoever the, you are, whoever Dave's about to blur out of his mouth, we want money. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's uh, and I learned. Well, here let me let me plug the person who told me, Emily Prokop, who is not in the chat room tonight. What I know, hard to believe. What? The story She's behind the best. Podcast. Ellie Emily's always here. Yeah, E Podcast Productions uh, told me about Temi. T E M I Timmy Timmy. That's what I said. Uh, 10 cents a word. And I use them on, I, I was really, really tired and did not want to type show notes. So I, as I was, you know, kind of finishing up the recording, I was like, I'm going to try this. Cause the first one's like free and they did a really good job. It's not a person. It's a robot that's transcribing it. And then you can kind of go in and it's, it, I don't know how to explain it, but you click on a word and you can hear what it is and that whole nine yards. And at the end you can kind of, for me, I, I needed to beat it out of the transcript into more of a written form, and it actually wasn't that bad. It also, if you ever do that, because that was a show I did off the top of my head, it also shows you how completely ADD you are if you are. Because all of a sudden you see in print where, okay, I went off topic here, I went off topic here, and it actually made me want to go back and re-record it. But uh, since we're talking transcripts, that's the latest found. I've, uh, yeah, it's an interesting topic because it's it's hard to tell how much it helps and yeah. if it's good or bad and it does cost money. So I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just an interesting topic. And people always want to know, you know, should I, should I have my podcast transcribed? And I, and I, I like the accessibility. Um, yeah. Do, do you guys, uh, do, no. do you, do you find, uh, that people actually spend time on your websites? I find that I get almost no one at my website. Everyone seems to get it. The that podcast. is hard to tell. So uh, we have a new podcast Apple. at work and I, just looked at the stats recently because someone asked <laughs> otherwise i never almost look at stats and the majority of listens is coming from from chrome and mozilla i mean websites right but that doesn't it still doesn't tell me it doesn't tell me how much they listened um it just tells me that they probably clicked play uh so you know and other people will tell you i think rob dave at libsyn will tell you that you know 
people get easily distracted on a website. You know, we're on a, on a podcast app, you click play, you're ready to listen to a podcast. On a web page, you click play, and there's other things to go to, so you click away. Um, and that might be fine. Exposure is good. If people sample your podcast, that's not a bad thing. Maybe they just want to sample it and then like, then they pull up their app and they go subscribe. But, you know, I think social actually in this case is driving that because it's a newer podcast. We have a huge social media following and people come to the page. They may try it where they go after that. Who knows? Um, and I think that's probably the main function of a website, having a podcast player there so that people can see what is this about? click play. Do I want to listen? Also probably a good reason to get right to the point when you start your podcast and not have a lot of chitter chatter where people are like, I don't, they click play to sample and they're out because they, you spent the first even minute just talking about something that's not relevant. Yeah. I had a friend I, of, go ahead, Ann. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that I use it to drive people to the website to sign up for the mailing list. So I have yeah. like a pop-up mailing list and then I'm able to send them email each week with the released episode and then sell all other things <laughs> that are related to the podcast. And do you give added value with your uh, newsletter, like get the newsletter and you get yeah. the top five tricks for speaking clearer uh -huh. or mm -hmm. I do, it, it, but again, it's, it's a lot of time. I mean, it's, we're working very hard, um, but we are getting people who are coming for other reasons than just the podcast, but for all the supplemental reasons, like we sell the consulting services or a product that does marketing campaigns for the industry and that sort of thing. And that so really is a key to well for that. That's a key to a website is that, yeah. that they came didn't know you had a podcast and mm -hmm. found out you had a podcast and now you have a listener, right? I think that that's helpful. Exactly. So you need to have, yeah. you need to have it there in yeah. order for them to say, oh, there's also a podcast about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want a deep dive, right? Your subscriber mm -hmm. is the person who's going to deep dive and that they're going to listen to a podcast. Yeah. Dave. And then that, that podcast then drives them right back to the website. So it's kind of this, mm -hmm. That's the way it works. No one ever goes back to the website after they listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason. <laughs> it's none. I don't care about the links in your show notes, Dave. No, nope, they don't. <laughs> it's in what? the app. Like you can put links in your in the apps now, right? Like so, if you say, you know, if you're listening to this, swipe left on your app, and you can get the link to our whatever I think I talked about. Uh, does anyone? Do you guys include links in your in your uh, show notes that? show up in apps, some apps support this, some don't. Um, do you use them, do you use those links? And then what do you use them for? What's your call to action in a podcast? I asked a lot of questions there. Go with the first one. Do you guys know and use links in your podcast show notes that go into your feed so they're actually clickable in the apps? Who does that? I do, I do that. Who doesn't do that? I don't think I understand what you're asking. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm listening to your show on, on Pocket Casts, and uh -huh. I'm, I'm listening and you say, in the, and you say, Hey, join our newsletter. All you have to do is click the link right there in your app. And I, I'm, I look at the show notes in the app. I can yeah, yeah. click the link. So I don't, I don't have to go to your website to sign up. I can right, 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 right. Okay. I, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. When you said swipe left, I was, I was, I, well, that tells us what kind of apps you, you, uh, you, you, yeah, yeah, you spend yeah, right, your time right. on. <laughs> no, I thought the same thing. Yeah. And, I, and I've, yeah. Anyways, the thing I did in my last episode is. I asked my audience a question and I said, if you have any comments, feel free to call. And depending on the app and I'll hold this up, mm -hmm. I have my voicemail number there. And when you put a phone number in, you know, your typical three digits dash, et cetera, et cetera. In theory, I can click this. Is that iTunes? Cause if we yeah. are Apple podcasts, yeah. it's and the I, only and one that when, matters. Mm -hmm. So when you I know, click that, it's now going to call my, my voicemail number. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it work? Uh, does it work? Uh, survey says not, not the phone number. I know the, phone, yes, number, the phone number works. Uh, does, no, does the call no to action? Call. Work? No one calls. Nobody called. So, uh, <laughs> but I yeah, will, but people, I, people call you so, all the time. Don't they? Yeah, I'm going to say, I, I usually, if I'm doing a super duper call to action, I hit it really hard, especially at the beginning. This was kind of more towards the end and that's the worst place to put a call to action. How it's, many... it's, it's the best place to put it. It's also the worst place to put it uh, at the end. Yeah, because on one hand, the people that hear that are your diehard fans, yeah, that and that's really the best people to do it. But on the other hand, there's always that chance that somebody quit at the, the 30 minute mark. And if you're quit. selling something, the, the most likely person to buy it is going to be there towards the end. If yeah. you're trying to get a subscriber, you need to get them before they bail. Um, and that that kind of goes to my question of what's your call to action in a podcast? So a lot of people come and they listen. Again, that sampling behavior. That man, wow. It sounds like it took a marketing class when they said that. What is sampling behavior? I just made that up. <laughs> sampling. Someone take checking out your podcast 
Um, you, you, that's your shot. That's your one shot to get them into being a subscriber. Do, do you in the beginning say, Hey, subscribe to my podcast. Do you annoy the subscribers when you do that? Where do you, do you have call to action for subscribe? Anyone? No, no one, no one tells their audience. So you, at this, the end, I go to YouTube the all the time at the end, but everyone, most 95% mm -hmm. of people are gone. Um, and the people who are left at the end are your subscribers. So I definitely would think about shifting that if you do give that call to action. But on YouTube, you have to tell people like, and, and you, we hear this in podcasts all the time. I think uh, Paul Colligan will tell you, like, if you don't, if you don't ask, people aren't going to do it, right? You have to remind them that you sort of need this thing to be done. But podcasts are a little different. I think a lot of times, you know, if I'm on Pocket Cast, I have to subscribe before I can even listen, which sucks. Fix that Pocket Cast. That's stupid. But <laughs> there are a lot of apps where you can just sample. But, you know, if you don't tell people what you want them to do, a lot of times it doesn't happen. That's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. Clay's got a new call to action. <laughs> I'm on it. Dave, is, I mean, is this good advice? Do you, do you want to tell people to subscribe to your podcast? What do you do? Because you've done 50 Yeah, and what episodes. I did was instead of saying subscribe to me on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and, and Spotify and iHeartRadio, I have one page, schoolofpodcasting.com slash subscribe. Where do you put that? Where's that uh, call to action? Where would I put that? typically at the end and you're right i probably should put it somewhere at least in the middle it's like if you, hey, if you put it at the beginning someone's going to make a podcast show reviewing beginnings of podcasts and they're going to shut you down before you get two minutes in so you that sounds do that. personal like like yeah. like, like a podcast rodeo show kind of podcast. thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so if you that is true because if you ask me to subscribe and i haven't heard anything yet right why would I subscribe? I haven't 13 heard 13 minutes and 37 seconds is the optimal place to put it because right. we know if you're in your commute, you stopped at the drive through of Starbucks on average two yeah. times and you can have time to subscribe. Sorry, I'm going on my average length podcast rant. Yeah. Hey, so so Dave uh, Dave brought up phone calls earlier just a few minutes ago and it reminded me, I don't know if you mind, I switched gears a little bit here, um, but Dave reminded me of that phone call business. and. So many, so many podcasts have SpeakPipe, uh, a custom phone number, and we're talking about growing new, your audience. As a podcaster, you can call those shows and get your voice for 30 seconds or a minute in front of their audience without even yep. being a guest on the show. I've been on Dave's show in the same way. My show has a hotline, 607-378-FISH. Anyone can call it, leave a voicemail. I always play it on the show. Uh, and I call in lots of other shows and I hit the speak pipe button on Libsyn on the feed podcast. And I call into those shows. And every time I say fish nerds podcast, fish nerds podcast, and try to get, you know, I try to be interesting enough where people want to listen, but, uh, you're getting your name in front of more and more people. Every time you do it to the rest of you call shows, or do you have a call a phone number for your show? I have a, I have a speak pipe call phone number. I have a I, Google voice. Google voicemail uh, number. That's what I use. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I have one too. And the key is to actually play the, if you're asking for feedback, include that feedback, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's great. It, that's the that, same thing. I, if you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash contact, you'll see my email, you'll see my speak pipe, and you'll see my phone number from podcastvoicemail.com. Yeah. I think it's because, important. This is like a, I won't go on my mini rant about this, but no, I think right. it's important to have many different ways for the audience to be on your show. Because mm -hmm. different people have different ways of wanting to interact with you. So like having your email, having your phone number, encouraging them to record themselves and email it to you, whatever it is, everybody's going to have a different level of comfort for how they come to your show. And I think opening yourself up to all those different avenues is going to get you a lot more of that engagement feedback than, uh, than if you just say have a, a voicemail or just an email or something like that. Right. You want to eliminate the, oh, I didn't know how to contact you. It's like, no, here's, here's, you know, on one hand, we always hear, don't give them too many choices, but on the contact pages, like take your pick, yeah, email, right. voicemail, <laughs> whatever you want. Here it is. Choose one and do it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Clay was talking about leaving voice. The, the reason I know Steve Stewart is a, he kept contacting my show and then I heard him on the feed and then I heard him on another one. And then I, and then I finally got to meet him. Um, and Steve just for a while was everywhere. Every, I mean, every show I listened to, if, if, if somebody asked a question, they would get, you know, hey, if you have any questions, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, hey, we got a question this week. It's from Steve Stewart. And he was just everywhere. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a good tip. I mean, feedback is hard as a podcaster. It can be hard to get feedback, especially when you don't have much of an audience, right? So it's an easy, easy, quote unquote, 
opportunity for you to go out and, and get in front of other audiences by actually participating. People love, podcasters love when you reach out. It's not like getting an email from someone who'd heard the show. Um, that's cool. Even no matter how big as a listener you think that show is, email them. <laughs> like um, you might not get as much feedback as you think because that's a high threshold activity. Like it's hard to do uh, to, to actually get in touch with somebody. So like Dave saying, Steve was everywhere. He's been on this show and, and that's how, I'm sure that's how I know of him too because he just, yeah. showed up and, and he and will provided you know good feedback not just like hey I'd like to be on your show well no, i'm he, going he to an up. event in uh in april in nashville and steve stewart is going to be my we're sharing a hotel so he's gone from emailer to roommate might be tmi there but no. <laughs> <laughs> good for you Dave. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for you too <laughs> no no steve is happily married no, no. Well, you know, I mean, the thing too, is that if you're going to do that too, respond to the emails that you get, I think that's yeah, like exactly. a huge yeah. thing. Yeah. That's a huge way to cultivate that word of mouth is that you respond to the email that you get and then they get, you build that relationship with them. And then they say, oh, hey, I know Ray, because I emailed with him about this and they tell other people about your show as well. So I think that's definitely a big part of it. And the sad thing is people will actually be surprised when you do it. They'll thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks right, for getting back right. to me. And my... Oh my way well, not as good as it used to be but i tried to actually do that and do it within like 24 hours do it fast i try to do it fast because You'd never get back to it yeah you a it'll be harder to get back to um and also leave short emails <laughs> the long emails are almost impossible for me to get back to when you short i get right back to you but um yeah. people are surprised because this doesn't happen it's not common um youtube all the time people don't answer their comments i answer comments people are like oh my god i didn't actually expect you to answer my question which is just crazy uh, but so engaging back uh and that is one of the reasons i think i see uh someone take another step forward to becoming a subscriber when you actually engage back because there you are you're you're there and people appreciate that so um it's a sad I state of affairs that people don't get back to people but it's an opportunity for you what is was, that picture, was, Dave? Oh, sorry, Ann. That's okay. I, I don't. Let me click on Dave. Dave's holding up a picture. Tim Dewey. Show my Christmas card. He he lost his audio, so I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Thank you. Dave's done a lot of episodes. Are oh, you back now? <laughs> I'm back now. That's weird. Yeah, yeah you're back. Yeah. Now. yeah. All right. Uh, that is Tim Dewey. Speaking of of uh, having conversations with people, and he used to say he does the Sled Dog podcast. And he said, I talk to you more than I do my friends who live like right down the street because he would leave a voicemail. I would answer the voicemail with like speak pipe or something like that. And we would just have this time shifted conversation. He's like, I end up talking to you like, you know, eight, nine times a month. He goes, my friend lives right down the street. I maybe talk to him, you know, once every two months. Yeah. So you do have this conversation with your audience, which is it's time shifted, but it's cool. Anchor used to be really great for that. And then they changed and they try to do a podcasting and I don't know what the heck anchor does anymore, but, and we interrupted. Oh, I was just going to ask if any of you guys have had any success with, um, I'm using with, with uh, Facebook messenger. I'm using, uh, many chat. Is that it? Um, only because I was listening to Jay bear podcast and he had that running and it wasn't obnoxious. And so it's kind of a fine line. I just didn't know if any of you guys, is that a bot? back and forth. It like yeah, a it's a bot. So this it's, is like yeah. the new thing I'm hearing the about. Facebook like, bot. It's bot like, thing. like, I don't yeah. know if they're good or bad. I don't understand bots. So What's much. it called again? It's called ManyChat. So, Many um, chat. yeah, and you can sign up for a free account. And then anytime somebody um, comes onto your Facebook business page, of course, um, they can they can be added onto a list and then you can broadcast out to them or you can have, like, I tied mine to the YouTube channel. So every time a, a podcast comes out, it'll automatically just pop up a messenger saying the new episode is out. And I found that to be the least annoying. Cause if you get messenger, you know, yeah, I wouldn't want time, anything to do with that. Really, yeah. yeah. I, don't want, well, I don't want IMs, but. Well, it's not, it, I only kind of did that because I was taking examples from other podcasts. Right. That but if people, if people to, opt into it, then I, yeah, then they do. Fine. They opt in, they yeah, opt in, which is it. fine. I mean, so, and then you can get even more like verbose and ask questions and get responses. And then if this, then that, and you can do that all in the messenger. So I didn't know if anybody was doing that here. Yeah. I'm not doing it, but it's, I mean, it's sort of an art, it's sort of an elevated form of social media, I would say. Well, so, yeah. That was, does it work? 
That's well, that's question. what I, that was my question. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> nice that, that you get a pop up every time the episode is released. They will, you know, if they're on Facebook, because a lot of my audience is on Facebook. Um, and so if they just happen to be on Facebook, there'll be a pop up and it'll just say the, the latest episode is here. And that's it. I don't, I don't, and if somebody decides to, you know, respond to that or say, hey, great episode, I will immediately be able to see that and respond to it right away. A little bit easier for me than a than a phone call, just because that's where I reside. I, I'll have a, a Facebook open at some point, like mo most of the hours of the day, because people communicate to me that way in my industry. So for me, it works. It works for for me in terms of engagement. Yeah, I know in uh, social media marketing world, they had multiple sessions yeah. on how bots are the second coming and you're either going to love them or hate them, but they're coming yeah. and a lot of people are going to use them. So I did not attend any of those. I wanted to, but it, it, according to Michael Stelzner, you're either in the, oh man, yeah. this is the best thing ever or the, there's no way I'm doing that. He goes, there's no in between. So I think, I think if it's opt-in, I mean, it's with a podcast, it's yeah. anything you it's can do to remind your audience we're here and there's a new episode and they've opted into it fine. Right. As long as you, you know, it's just like an email newsletter, you know, pop-ups on your website can be annoying. Um, but you know, if they're, if they're before you leave, sometimes that's better. I mean, yeah, these just, these are opinions, right? I mean, and the thing is sometimes these things work yet you don't like them. Like I don't have a pop on my website because I hate them, but I will admit they, they work. do work. They will mm -hmm. drive X amount of signups and that, it's per personal preference. I don't have, I used to, I started off with Google, um, AdSense back in like 2009 on my blogger, blo wait, is it blogger.com? Whatever their blogspot, And it's so ugly. And you got like five cents, maybe a month or something. And it wasn't worth exchanging that five cents for the ugliness and pain of having stupid ads on your site. So <laughs> it's a decision, right? It, yeah. It's what do you value? I guess more, um, and for it, and I think it depends on your audience. I think it depends on the size of your show. I mean, it depends on a lot of different factors. It's just good to know that these options are out there and then you decide, does this work for my show? Yeah. And then you just have to make sure that you're responding because if you don't, Facebook's right. going to penalize you and say, oh, you respond with an average time of, you know, right. 20 Regardless, days or whatever. I mean, yeah. You shouldn't be putting stuff out there. I mean, that's, exactly. you know, the whole gonna... having social media accounts and then sort of just mm -hmm. never being there to respond is probably worse than not being there at all. Yeah another yeah. opinion, but, um, what else can we do? What, what can we tell new podcasts? We're getting close to the end here, but, uh, someone just started a show. They're listening to this show because they need to find out what the heck to do next. Uh, their show is amazing, but they need to, um, they want to grow it. They're, they're obsessing with their stats because every new podcaster obsesses. So, so even when they see, they went from 10 downloads to 15 downloads, they're, they're like doing the jig. Is that the, the jig? Is that a, why do I sound so old? Because <laughs> I am old. Doing the Foxtrot. Foxtrot. <laughs> They're like bebopping. The waltz. Like, I'm old. I'm not that old. Anyways, <laughs> we need advice. It's advice time on the round table. Um, I've just started a new podcast and I want to know what to do. And since Dave, you're the co-host, we put you in the hot seat first. What should I do? Um... So are, you, you did say our show is good, right? Your show is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. If if I just put it in front of the right of the people who I'm speaking to, they'll subscribe. Well, that's how do I find them? Because we've already talked about going to events right. around your your industry. That would be a great place because that can is I, your your. I, can I just build it and they'll show up? Some no. will, right? I mean, my mm -hmm. SEO. I did my SEO. I put the right title in I in Apple Podcast, Dave. They're gonna show up. They're searching for it. Well, I'm done. And, that's and true, but but that's again going back to you know I've got five new downloads this week and I'm looking for a hundred. That's the problem. Every listener counts, Dave. No, they all count. It's just I want a hundred, not five. I get it. Yeah. Get it. So um, I'm trying to think where else to go. I mean, it it really is a matter of what's my first move. I haven't. So I have a podcast. I have no, done business card. Done nothing. A business card. Business card is <laughs> step one. Really. Yeah, that would be my step one. It's not going to end up in the trash as soon as I give it to you? Um, Probably it will. What, what, I mean, if I give it to the right person, maybe. Because I'll if just I give it out to it, everybody, because then you're wasting I, money. If I'm standing in line at the grocery store and somebody sees my T-shirt and they go, oh, you do a podcast? And I go, yeah, actually, I teach people how to podcast. And they go, oh, cool. I'll have to check it out. What is it? And I go, schoolofpodcasting.com. They go, oh, cool. 
if I give them a business card, even if they throw it away, I just need them to hold that long enough to get in front of a computer and type. And it costs me uh, you know, a half a cent. What about Clay's approach in that one? If you're going to give out, don't give them your business card until they sign up on their phone. Well, the, How about the just card get their they phone? Can have. Yeah. I know. I know. But I'm, <laughs> and I'm saying, take the, you know, have them, if you're in line to go straight to your board anyway. So pull out your phone, grab Apple Podcasts. That's it. And, and, or I don't know text them a message i don't know i'm trying to think how what's more effective like because we know the business card it's it's good you if you need you don't want to have to try to memorize something so anything you can give somebody with the with the name of it that they can type but going to their phone is probably more direct you're right that's actually a better strategy because now they don't have to remember it and you can even show them and train them yeah. and make sure they know how so they can go and then, yeah and you then go to. tell them to tell somebody else qr codes it's the future <laughs> Say in my qr code I get this tattoo on my chest. This is going to get weird. Just... <laughs> All right. Well, now the rest of you had time. So clearly we have genius, uh, genius tips. So whoever wants to jump in to the new podcast or advice, like I've done nothing. I've started a new pod. I started a podcast. I'm just going to go make the no one. I'm not going to tell anyone about it. Um, but maybe I should, maybe I should do something. I, I, I want one tip beyond what we said before, which I think maybe Clay has kind of gotten at. It, a little bit is like be an active part of a community in which your podcast is relevant, you know, so not just, just, not just promoting your own podcast, but uh, be there, you know, whether it's on Facebook or wherever, or Twitter or wherever it is um, and be a contributing member to that community. For so sure. that people you're not just, like you said, not just self promotion. I mean, I know I don't, I just met Clay tonight, but I know his name because I see him in, Facebook podcasting groups all the time. And I'm like, oh, that guy's pretty smart. Uh, oh, it's come like, on. You... <laughs> He's buttering up his fan. <laughs> Clay, go tell a lot of people. I'm so happy. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, it's like, I mean, it's a real thing. I, I you, you, We see it all the time in, let's say, Facebook groups where people only jump in to mention their own show or something like that. Yeah. But if they're actually offering help to people, um, I think that's that's a, a huge way to uh, get people to recognize and, and become a part of your show. Yeah, I think it's a good tip. I mean, I've even done things like around. So going to conferences, we've talked about in your niche. That's cool, but super expensive. A lot of people can't do that. But there's always going to be uh, a hashtag on Twitter for that conference. Mm -hmm. There's going to probably be someone's live tweeting uh, from a session or the conference overall tweet chats that they call them. I get in those follow hashtags and get in there in the conversation. People, it'll always be like Q like question. And then yeah, right, right. like I have found, I'll, I've just been, I found so many people relevant to the subject I was participating in through Twitter, like hashtags, or even mm -hmm. now Instagram is really big mm -hmm. with hashtags, follow a hashtag, um, give real, real feedback on people's photos and stuff. And they'll just find out who you are. Right. You don't have to like, like, uh, Jonathan saying, you know, you're not just there. Hey, check out my podcast. That's not really going to work. That's spam. Dave is going to just shut you out immediately. <laughs> but yeah, so I like it. And there's ways around, you know, not having a budget. You can definitely, on, online communities is a, a fantastic one. Google Plus used to be amazing for this. It was a community for everything. I don't know. I guess it sort of still exists, but whatever. There's a platform where your audience already is gathering and talking. So you need to jump into that pool uh, of having a conversation. Um, and... What do, you, what do you got? Um, well, I think engagement is super important. And, you know, we've also tried something relatively new in terms of getting a different audience um, on Instagram, more of a millennial mm -hmm. kind of a following. And what's really interesting is we did kind of an experiment where we did a, a Instagram takeover one day and oh, we like used that. all the ha appropriate hashtags and we said, hey, take a picture of your day. Sh uh, show us how you're being a boss. Who did you take and over? Um, well, our like a account. Big account. Oh, they, you no, let, they you took let over. your audience take over. Yeah, we let the audience oh. take over to show how, how they do you were do that. A you boss. give them the login. How does that work? Um, well, okay, we tried it both ways. To give them the login was just a little bit too much homework. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, include these hashtags too. We have we have groupings of hashtags for each part of your day. Let's say you're getting up and you're having your morning coffee and you're you're getting ready to start your your day like a boss or whatever. We have all sorts of like cool like hashtags for coffee and being a boss. And so we have like certain times of the day that oh maybe you walk your dog and like just fun things. And so 
we tried it where they took over and it ended up being a lot of work for them and they had to be very technically savvy to do it. So now we're at the point where we're like, just take seven photos of yourself during the day being a boss. Here's an example of what other people have done. And, and, we, have, and then we go ahead and we post and yeah, we like use it. the appropriate hashtags. And what's amazing is that we not only gained followers just because it was a whole, it was just fun for everybody that already followed us, but we got all those people's followers as well. Right. And that's, um, that's yeah, sort that of the point well. too. Like, it's not always about Engagement. getting people to play your podcast through social, but mm -hmm. building through social so that it kind of the same concept of an email list is so you can yeah. repeatedly, because we know from ads, you have to tell people seven times before they, you know, yeah. you might take action. So mm -hmm. if they are interacting, if you're there on a daily basis, they learn who you are, they see, you know, it may take like three months on Instagram, but they'll see a post and like, yes. oh, I am interested in that content, yeah. right? It might not be this episode, but it might be four episodes and, later where you talk about something they really wanna well, make and, the effort to go over yeah. and listen. And we're lucky because in reality, I mean, being a boss is kind of, you know, it. my industry happens to be pretty, you know, it's kind of a smaller industry, but being a boss is pretty much global. So we have the opportunity of kind of throwing spaghetti against the wall and then finding those people that may not have ever found us otherwise saying, oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm a boss and yeah, I'm interested in voiceover. And therefore they subscribe to the the podcast and and it just gets them in at a deeper level. When you said boss, I, I, always, I got the impression you were saying like, like the boss man, like, like, as in like, well, uh, like you're the boss, be the boss of your own, but you, are you talking about actual bosses, like well, managers? No, I'm just talking about like, okay. and it just well, you just be said a there boss. was a lot of bosses. So I thought maybe worldwide. Well, be a boss of your own company. It's gotcha. entrepreneurship, okay, so basically. It's entre that's, gotcha. So it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of appealing to that whole, be because gotcha. any creative, no matter what they do, if they're in right. voice, they're acting, you're your own boss. Yeah. So that is be, a, a more global being a boss. Being a boss. It's both yes. ways. You can have it both mm -hmm. ways. You can be a yeah, boss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Best boss. All right. So, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and in, in case you're wondering, podcastboss.com already taken. I do not own it. Uh, it's okay. Bad. He will. Don't worry. He'll get it in the auction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For $30,000. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> So, so everyone's really saying engage, engage, engage. That's what we're saying over and over again. Uh, so, two other things I've done is one is if I'm in a Facebook group, uh, and I'm in a lot, I'm in obviously in, in podcasting groups, but in a lot of fishing groups as well, and we get in a lot of hot debates. And I'll invite people on my show. If they say no, then I'll do a segment called Facebook Theater, where I will take the thread of conversation <laughs> oh, fine, and I will fine. write a script and my daughters and I will act it out and we will include that in the show as part. And then I'll link that back into that conversation thread so that John can hear a 10-year-old girl doing an impression of him, <laughs> nice. which is really great. That's and they love it. They that's love great. it. It's so fun. The other thing I've done is uh, I've engaged my audience and invited them to be part of the show. Really engaged listeners are actually great podcasters in a lot of ways. So my co-host left a year or so ago, and now I've got 18 segment producers who used to be listeners, and now they produce little four to eight minute segments for the show and submit them to my show and I use them. And of course that engagement grows with them. So I have got a, a cooking correspondent and a biologist and I've got uh, a shark fisherman and I've got all kinds of different people who make stories for me. So my show is like a magazine. And, and that in, it, for me, that allows more engagement. Uh, if I was doing a scripted show, it'd be harder. If I was an entrepreneur show, I don't even know what that means. Uh, that's harder. By the way, I could use some help with the entrepreneur. I'm going to talk to you. Because um, I, don't, I don't make money on this show. But, uh, well, Patreon. But, uh, but engagement, engagement is really the critical thing. And value your listeners. If they make a comment anywhere, Say their name on your show at the minimum. They love it. And you know, I know I'm like Dave and I are friends. And Dave mentioned my name like three weeks ago on a show. And I still got a little tear in my eye. I was like, hey, he said my name. <laughs> you know, I was so happy. So engage your audience. People love to hear their voice, even if it's not their own voice, if it's your daughter doing their voice. But get their opinions out there and allow for dissent and whatever conversation happens for your show. It's great. Um, so I just engage is, is really the, the trick, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, for me, I would say, you know, you talk about Dave mentioning, I mean, he mentions a round table on his show and he's been a co-host from day one. And I still, I'm like, oh, thanks, Dave. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's practically his show. Like, <laughs> like, why would you do that? It's amazing. So, and he'll pull out segments. So it is, it doesn't matter. Right? People love it no matter what. Um, even if you think that they are, you know, they're so un embedded, why wouldn't they? But, uh, you know, and I'd say, you know, go out and, and work with 
you know, there's engagement with your audience, engage with the other podcasters in your community. Um, Dave and Daniel and I, we, we started a show together <laughs> and, um, you know, so we, we cross promote across all our audiences and it, you know, I instantly tripled my potential audience. I, mean, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't say most of Dave's audience came over or most of Daniel's, you know, you get some, um, and that's fine, but you know, just more word of mouth, but really it's fun. I mean, these are the conversations you have a show in a niche for a reason, cause you love it. Go out with those other people. Like Dave, you're talking about how you talk, the guy down the street talks more uh, to you than he does his friends because he's talking to you about that one thing. That you and he has no are. friends. He has no anyway, That's his friend is not real. <laughs> this is imaginary friend. Um, so yeah, I mean, go out, go out and get in your niche. Don't, don't view people as competition. Um, and even if you don't view, I mean, you might be worried that someone you think, oh, but they probably think I'm competition or I'm trying to do something, um, you know, devilish here and, and get in front, just go have real conversations, have fun with the other people in your community. And, uh, I think that there's some, some surprising things will happen there. Um, I mean, I think too, that the thing that you realize, the longer you're doing your podcasting and you're talking to your audience, the more appetite there is out there for the type of show that you're making. So the, the idea of competition starts to kind of melt away after a while, because you realize that your listeners will listen to another show, but you're not going to lose them to that show. They just want more content. Right. And so we did that with a kid. We started a group called kids listen, which is an organization that helps try to promote uh, quality audio for kids. And it's been, it's it, this, I think there's 50 podcasts that are now a part of it. And you would think that we would all be competing with each other, but instead we're always all talking each other up because we realized that the audience is thirsty for this stuff. Yeah. And I can, I can guarantee you when you start a podcast, um, there's going to be other podcasts in your niche and you are mm -hmm. going to work. You are going to think I'm never going to be like that other podcast. Um, I'm, you know, you're going to have some, probably some imposter syndrome or feel like they're just so far ahead of you or out of reach. Um, you know, this is, you know, I think even today you can start a podcast in any niche. I think the only thing you really have to do is, is like start and get involved. And a year yeah. or two later, you'll be right there. If you're consistent, it's good content. You're nice. You're having conversations from the outside. Listeners will just start to see you as another great source for content in that niche. Right? So yeah, you, you do have to put some of that aside and think, you know, I can do this too, but really it's just, just showing up. Um, and consistency is obviously key. I'm terrible at it, but, um, if you can be consistent in your niche and have those conversations and and, and um, be there as a resource, that'll do a, a lot. And it'll take time, right? We all know that, I think we've heard that this this builds slowly, but it does build, podcasts do build. And what, you know, there's the, I need to find new listeners, but how many do you really need, right? There's gonna be a ceiling and what do you need them for? I mean, you know, and you're selling products, but maybe your products are, you know, expensive. So you only need two or three people, or maybe they're, <laughs> maybe you're selling swag and you need to sell like 300 t-shirts, you know, there's different, yeah, I think we have to think about how much audience do we actually quote unquote need as well. Um, and it depends on the goals of your podcast, I guess. But, you know, we hear that in podcasting, you can do a lot more with a lot less, you know, there's the thousand dedicated, um, audiences and, and there's all kinds of theories on that. But, you know, I think you can do more with less because you're speaking to a very specific person. So it comes back to valuing each, each subscriber again, and realizing when your downloads go from. 10 to 15, like what those five people mean. And, it, and I think part of that engagement, you know, trying to get those people, it is again, feedback is hard to get, right? I think maybe one goal is to really try and get, uh, I think Jonathan, you were saying people like to interact differently. Um, so trying yeah. different ways, email me or call in, or, you know, there's contest that can certainly do. I, I don't, is anyone a fan of doing contests that works for an email list, but people are only signing up to get, uh, the thing that you're giving away but a couple people will stay. I mean, I don't know. Anyone use contests to get that? That's another one. People are like, Oh, do a contest. You'll get a lot more. I, I, I do contests and I've been doing them for years and I only get four or five entries into most even, mm -hmm. I, and I've got a pretty good audience now, but people just don't enter. And so I end up, you know, I'll end up having a prize worth a couple hundred bucks or, mm -hmm. and then, you know, like five people, throw their name in the hat and the same person seems to win every time. Interesting. So yeah. So okay, I well, then I you found out that maybe that. that's just not one route for you, right? No, not no. right now. Maybe not for me. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good to know. 
Yeah. yeah, I've done that in the past. I did a, uh, and it just dawned on me, I haven't done one of these in a while, but I used to do about a yearly survey, kind of like, what do you like about the show? What do you wish I would do differently? What would you like to hear about in the show in the future? Just kind of like get a pulse. How old are you? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to see who's listening. Mm -hmm. um, and it just dawned on me, I haven't done one of these in a while. And I used to do like the $25 Amazon gift card or, and I'm same thing with Clay. I'd get, you know, whatever, 10 people. I think that the new podcasters probably so aren't doing that enough, like survey, like actually figuring out who the heck's listening to your podcast. So we talk about how do I find an audience when I'm new? Well, you kind of need to know who the audience is. You, and they're probably different than who you think you're making the podcast for, Ooh. right? Oh, that's yeah. probably the key, right? So yeah. I, that's the thing that needs to be done. Surveys. I mean, your host, some hosts will have a pre-made survey for you. Survey Monkey is free. Um, I don't do this enough. This is a it Google you know, Forms is Google even Forms. better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Google Forms yeah. is great. Yeah, because Survey Monkey I think limits you to a hundred respondents, and we would all love mm -hmm. to get a hundred respondents. And I think you're only limited to ten questions. Where Google Forms, it's as many as you want, as much as you want. Yeah, and it's free. And you know, maybe that's a good thing when you do those things. Do them on your podcast only, not on social, because you do. If they're responding, they came from your podcast, right? right. Most likely. So I don't know. It's a really it's something that I don't do enough of and I should, but I think again, you might be surprised who's listening. And then I might give you some ideas about what other places to go to find that new audience. Yeah. You never know who's listening. I mean, we talked about, uh, I go to meetup.com. I have a Northeast Ohio meetup and we have maybe five to 10 people, but one of those five people was a guy that works at the local TV station. And when they needed a podcast guru, he's like, Oh, I know a guy right down the street. So I got to go on TV. So you never know who's listening and, and you might be surprised that somebody really, really cool. Hey, Dave, did you find going on TV grew your audience? <clears throat> the only person I know of that saw that, that I heard about was my dentist. <laughs> I walked in, <laughs> who? I walked in Wait, and she goes, were you on TV a couple weeks ago? Your mom, who the internet took a, <laughs> yeah, the dentist, no, my dentist. dentist. Oh, your dentist. My dentist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I did That's not see the bump at all. In, you know what? You know, one thing that was kind of funny that happened to me was that uh, a talent scout for an, a radio ad campaign for American Family Insurance wanted to do profile somebody who like worked from home for their ad campaign. And her kid liked my show. Nice. So I did this ad for American Family Insurance. And I always hear from people that, oh, yeah, we heard about you on the American Family Insurance commercial. Dude. So selling insurance yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and yeah. enjoy the podcast. It's pretty funny. Interesting, because because to say a uh, similar thing, we I make um, radio ads for other companies and for um, TV, local TV, and they're called Fish Nerds Minutes. And the radio and TV sells ads on the edge ends of the one minute segments I make for them. And so I sell oh, the cool. I make the content, sell the content to the radio station. They use it over and over again on the mm -hmm. TV, and they just sell different ads as bumpers. And so this is the Fish Nerds Minutes, one minute about fish but on the ends could be any kind of ad they want to sell uh and no growth from it yeah. but people in the streets go i heard you on the radio and i'm like yeah but my podcast listen to cool the hear podcast. me more here yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, de we're deep I, th I think i started the close of this about 20 minutes ago yeah. but that's okay anyone oh, left yeah. is, is there's is no the end hardcore is the hardcore? <laughs> there's no end <laughs> but because i because i thought of another question so forget it we're going to keep going i'll have to just do that 64 kilobits a second um so i am curious because i think Ann, you brought this up who's or maybe even Clay, anyone, because people want to know who's paying to get in front of other people, who's paid or paying Facebook ads, etc. I've tried. thought about it. <laughs> thought about it. So Clay, you thought tried. About it. Clay, mm -hmm. nothing you do works, buddy. <laughs> 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 you know, the podcast is great, but your marketing I, like I feel like that's like a really it's yeah, gonna be on Clay on Clay's tombstone. Nothing he tried to work. Oh, tell my wife I, I, you're not kidding. And and by the way, like I, I'm a science guy. Like I I'm a, I used to be a science teacher. I love science, and therefore I love failure. I learned so nice. much from from messing up. I love being wrong. I'm totally good about it. But yeah, I I've spent. Uh, I don't know, hundreds over the, mm. maybe even thousands over the past five years on Facebook ads and never seen one that had measurable impact on downloads. I can get numbers of likes up, no problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But actual people yeah. listening to the podcast I, and Facebook, I've just kind of, I've stopped giving them my money because uh, there's no Overcast. Return. I think you got to try Overcast. Dave, yeah. I don't, I'm going to try it. Overcast. Yeah. Mm. 
I, I, that's that's. I was just gonna say that's the one. I've tried Facebook ads, Twitter ads. Yeah. Uh, Overcast ad was the one that worked. Was because the, people are there looking for podcasts, so it's yeah. like here's a suggestion of a podcast while you're in a podcast app, and you can target like, it's Facebook ads for podcasters, really. It's, it's and, and it's just so it just feels so good to be able to say I got this many subscribers mm -hmm. from this ad, I, which you can't you can't do in any other uh, any other like any right. social ad or whatever. I I mean Apple would be, I, mean, this would be good re revenue for for Apple. It's Clay, I think never. this one's gonna work, buddy. I, you know, I, I, I shocked. I, I became, hey, and, and a question for like, how much would you pay mm. per prescriber? If you right. could say for sure, if I gave X amount of money per prescriber, right. how much would you pay? Yeah, it depends on what's worth to you, right? I mean, and yeah. you're selling products. So what do you, what, you know, what's a subscriber? Oh, well, in reality, you? it's, it, that's, that's a really good question. Um, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question because Anybody. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm like, I want cool. listeners, right. but more important than I, I mean, I want, I want loyal listeners and I want like yeah. good quality listeners. I don't necessarily care about the number of listeners, but the quality okay. listeners that are listening to me, there's a reason for it. They need help in that area and I'm providing content that's helping them. And so therefore they have a, they're, they're down the road, they might need more than what I'm giving to them on the podcast. So rather than for me, it's always been rather than trying to, to, to monetize the podcast, it was let's monetize the content around the podcast. Uh, but you know, that's a really good question. I, I don't know, you know, like I said, I have an ad ready to go and I don't think it's going, I'm really going to change that. I, I have two ads ready to go. One is to build the numbers of the podcast. The second ad is for a product that I sell that's related to the podcast, but it's, you know, it's consulting kind of marketing blast. We call have it. you thought about advertising on the fish nerds podcast? No, well, no but I, I absolutely, I absolutely could. <laughs> <laughs> would you would you pay two dollars and eight cents? Is that, no, that's what it, is that what I, it no, works? No, yeah, a dollar ninety nine only. That's that's my max. Because that's what it was for me. I just I just pulled up my Overcast account. I got uh, one hundred and sixty eight subscribers for three hundred fifty bucks, which calculates the two dollars and eight cents. That's solid. That's I, I like it. The thing that's is, great. yeah, like Ann says, quality. So we're, I'm going to assume that twenty of those people are still. Avid that's listeners, that's the question, right? So the, the so the real value is whatever the math that works out to be. Is I'm not doing that, but right. you know, so you're paying I don't know twenty some twenty bucks a subscriber or whatever. So, but Overcast is yeah, it's a model I wouldn't mind seeing other people use. I, I, I agree. I think it's really smart. Uh, yeah, it was a smart move. Yeah, mm -hmm. I actually I I pay for Overcast. I pay the ten bucks a year or whatever it is just to support Marco, but I still keep the ads on. Because I'm curious to see what other shows are doing are out there. You know, it's not like I'm being, you know, sold something I don't want to see. I want to see other podcasts. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's great. Yeah. All right. I will stop with that one. That was amazing. <laughs> um, hopefully, if you're still listening, you got some tips. If you're still listening, you're probably waiting for the tip. Uh, but that we're out. <laughs> That's it. It's don't all we worry, got. Don't worry. It's we'll do we this got. round again because this is a popular, you know, growing audience is always popular. When I ask you to submit your topics at podcastaroundtable.com slash guest, a lot of people will say how to grow your audience. So I, uh, I think each one of you said something about that. that's clearly how you got here. Um, otherwise I had no clue who you are. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I've interacted <laughs> with several of you. So thank everyone. And, uh, let it remind us again, the URL for your show. And thanks again for joining us on the round. Sure. Well, you can find us at VO boss. Uh, VOBoss.com actually will get you everything you need to know, all of our socials um, and uh, podcasts. Yeah, it's a good URL. It's easy to remember. Short yep. V O, the letters are there. V O. Uh, everyone boss. can spell boss. That's right. I dig it. <laughs> all right. Clay Fishner is also a good name. I like that name. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that Fishnerds. one worked. Clay, something worked. Fishnerds. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Finally. That wasn't my name. I, my, I had something else. My, oh, my, of course my it wasn't. My partner Otherwise, changed it to one that total worked. Fail. <laughs> Everything. Everything. The more, the more I give you, the more hard time I give you, the more I like you, Clay. So it makes me happy. Uh, hey, so fishnerds.com for everything. And I'm also a licensed fishing guide. And actually, my show makes money through driving business in my guide service. So that's fun. But yeah, fishnerds.com for all your fishy needs. And we're not just a fishing show. We talk science and biology and cooking and 
whatever silliness we want to do. So it's it's a lot of fun. And thank you for having me on the round table. I've been wanting to be on this show for like three years. Yeah, and I'm, I, try. I, 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 I get I, I get starstruck. And so it's nice one of those nights where like everyone on the show tonight, I know from the internet or from other podcasts. Nice. Uh, and so I'm nervous and I'm having such a great time. So oh, thank you so much. Yeah. You're awesome. And we surprised you with Jonathan. That was our yeah. special surprise. Oh man, <laughs> you don't, don't even know. <laughs> don't even know. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to ask, because people paid to go on a guide with you, do you tell them about the podcast or do you not push it on? I do. And I have a giant logo of my <laughs> nice. podcast Good. on my ice shanty, I'm an ice fishing guide, and I record podcasts in the ice shack. And so, yeah, and and about that's, I would say about half great. of my clients are listeners yeah. and they'll be on the ice and they'll go, hey, Clay, remember that time you made fun of that shark guy? And I'm like, no, I don't remember. I Clay, talk a lot where are you? You're in New England? New Hampshire, yeah. New Hampshire. My yeah. brother, my brother lives in New England. is a big ice uh, official. I'm going to send him over to you. Do it. Yeah, do it. And yeah. I just bought a brand new pontoon boat, so I need uh, clients for the nice. springtime because I now I'm in very very big debt. And I'm scared. <laughs> uh, Podcasters Roundtable, the modern day love connection. I'm really scared. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck. I mean Dave. Tell them what they won. Dave, thanks again. Of course. Uh, I tell them what they won. A cheese straightener. That. <laughs> 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 No, you're I asleep am, uh, for a second there, Dave. Like, like you were in my session at Social Media Marketing World. I'm calling out Dave. Dave, I saw him sleeping. Although Mike was talking, so you're fine. <laughs> my, it's one of those where you wake up, you kind of nod up. And Dave I look told up. me he was going to fall asleep before I started yeah. that session. So. I look up and, and and Ray is mouthing the words "wake up." <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me. You know what? I'm going to plug something different since we're talking new shows. My newest show. Mm -hmm is podcastrodeoshow.com where we uh we grab a random podcast and see how long we can hold on so Love find it. that at podcastrodeoshow.com <laughs> all right clay likes it i think it's one of my favorite <laughs> i love it Love it. are there voices dave there are uh I, I alexa mean, oh i see uh, now i said it now she's gonna wake yeah, up yeah. Uh, <laughs> the woman in the tube is on on occasion they're all gonna wake up all she just the... woke up yeah you do, um, and the, all everyone who's listening so this deep yeah all Lexes are. All right. She, well, picks, Dave, she picks the random podcast. So. Uh, oh, there. Yeah, I like it. All right. I'll have to tune in. You've never heard it? What kind of friend are you? I don't, a terrible. <laughs> worst friend. <laughs> podcast producers don't listen to podcasts. We don't have time. For that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Just not Dave. No, school <laughs> podcasting is like one of my favorite original podcasts. That's, yeah, how we got, that's, how we, that's how we got to this point. And he's the epic. The OG original podcast about podcasting. It's Dave Jackson, and I got him on my show. It's his show now because he's a star. Thanks, Dave. Jonathan, thanks again for your first roundtable. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so my show is fincastme.com or all the different shows that I'm starting to make for kids are at bestrobotever.com. And uh, and if I could just say also really quickly, um, I met Dave. There's no reason why Dave would ever remember this. In uh, Chicago, 2016, a podcast movement. Nice. And it was in July and I was telling him about my show and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm talking to him. And he was like, just do it. Just go home and do it. And uh, and it really kicked me in the butt, and I I started it the next month, so I'm I'm deeply indebted to Dave for that, nice. and uh, and uh, always have listened to this show since before I was podcasting, so I'm excited to be here. Amazing. Well, congrats. congrats Thanks, to everyone. Thanks. Um, if you're still podcasting after you started, you're successful. That's what I think. <laughs> Forget the numbers. <laughs> Someone's listening, and you're doing a great job. Yeah. All right, and if you're good enough. You love yourself. Just hard enough. Yeah. It's not enough. I'm dog on it, people. Gosh darn it. Dog on it. I know. I couldn't come out though. Right. <laughs> All right. Gosh we're, darn it. Gosh darn it. All right. We're out of here. Podcasters Roundtable 108 next time. Podcastersroundtable.com. Subscribe. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're you. a sampler and you've made it this far, we expect you to subscribe. All right. Wave goodbye. We're out of here. Goodbye. All right. Everybody. Thanks, everybody. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye.